And the Phil and Bridge Show. And, you know, when in doubt about what to talk about, I like to talk about what's going on in the room. Oh, well, that's <laughs> always it's always weird. We have cameras pointing at us right now. We've been wired. <laughs> and we have microphones on, too. <laughs> that is the truth. <laughs> so uh, where, where are you all here from? We do on CW12. We're part of Explore Tulsa, the TV show. Explore Tulsa is the name of the show. And how'd you find Brent? Well, it was a it was a public bathroom, uh, turnpike. Uh, he tapped twice. I answered. <laughs> uh, that's that's our story. We're going to stick to it. Now we found him in a pharmacy, actually. Yeah, I tapped twice, and, <laughs> and he prescribed. And where so, did uh, Roy D. Mercer come from? Oh, what was it? Uh, just a, a mad camping trip one weekend, and yeah, trying to find something else trip. to do. Just trying to find something silly to do on the radio, and. It finally worked. How did you guys feel? Did you think it would become what it is today? No. No, we were just looking for something to do, you know, something to fill time on the radio. And it's something to mess with our friends for a while, so that was kind of fun. And how did that work? When did the record deal come about? It was 96. No? Well, yes. we, we did the, you know, we did the, we produced the albums, the first two here ourselves, and sold them through an uh, auto parts store and did real well, and then Somebody, you know, got a bootleg copy over to uh, Scott Hendricks, who was then president of Capitol Nashville, and he approached us to, to do a record deal with them, and, and the first two albums that we produced here were the, actually the first two albums that they, they bought in their entirety and, and uh, put on Capitol, so, and were what, 14 albums, 15 albums? I mean, 17. 17, well, there's a lot of compilations and stuff with best ofs and greatest hits and stuff like that, but, yeah. Excuse us while we make a paycheck here. Yeah, part of <laughs> 97.5. Hello, KMOD. Uh, 725 is the time, and that was Nickelback. It's the Phil and Brent Show, and Mary Morris here with this entertainment update. Well, of course, Charlie Sheen. We have to do the Charlie Sheen update. I love it. I love, um, it doesn't feel, and they've said it, but it doesn't feel like a job. You, I get to come in here and talk and interact and have conversations, and, you know, I'm fully aware that, um, you know, even if I were part of a different radio at any point, it, it will never be this. I will never have this opportunity in this situation again. Um, just to work with such talented people, and I think sometimes when you're out there, you uh, you know you hear the things, but you don't realize that a lot of these things are just um, you know off the cuff. And yeah, they've just been super supportive, and, and uh, I just I love my job. What is what is it meant? To, I mean, you guys really, honestly, have, have had such great success here in the Tulsa market, and, and to the point where you've got national recognition. You could have really gone anywhere. Why stay here? We've been asked that before, and uh, we didn't have an answer then either. <laughs> <laughs> no, we love it here. It's just it's, it's the a size great of place. the market. It's uh, it's not an L.A. It's not a Dallas with all the traffic. It's uh, well, we do have traffic, but uh, it's just I don't know. Uh, we grew up here, and we just kind of never really wanted to get away. We thought we did for a while when we were younger and stupider, but uh, we kind of came finally to our senses and decided that uh, this is really where we want to be anyway. Sure. Now, for a long time, it was just you two, and then you added Brett, and then and then a fourth person. What what made you guys decide to do that? And that we early had nothing to do with that. That's all management. <laughs> we didn't want anybody. <laughs> nah, I mean, that's that's partially true. Well, we've always had you know somebody over here to do news or entertainment or whatever. Well, I think it really started because I could make Brent laugh, and and uh, I was working in production, just doing commercial production when I first came over here. <laughs> See, <Yeah>. I know. <laughs> and uh, you know, I, I would would go out and I'd chat with him. I, I didn't know the guys from Adam when I first, you know, came to town and, you know, I learned about him as we went and more things happened and, uh, you know, I eventually came in here and grabbed a microphone and, uh, you know, started putting my two cents in and they let me do it. You know, uh, it's uh, tough to try to be funny all the time, but fortunately when you have uh, all the funny people around, you don't have to be funny all the time. You can uh, just wait until the right moment. And, you know, since then, it is kind of, the position has kind of evolved. I almost don't even call it producer anymore. I mean, I help schedule uh, stuff to go around. I make sure the stuff is where it's supposed to be. I, I kind of wrangle the guys. I do the stuff that they don't like to do sometimes. So that's why they keep me around. So what would you say uh, to 
young broadcasters wanting to get in the business. <laughs> don't! <laughs> <laughs> please! Please uh, don't! Uh, it's no, it's yeah. a lot of fun. It's more fun than television. I'm sorry. More fun than television. It's more fun than than uh, you know sitting around trying to write a book or, or, or whatever. It's it's a great time. We have a great time. We come in here for four hours, and this is playtime. This is you know the time. Therapy. That, yeah. What do they say when when you when your job is not work, then it, you know you found exactly the right thing to do. And and we've been blessed uh, you know for 25 years of being able to do what we want to do and and do what makes us happy and. It doesn't get any better than that. Awesome. There's your tagline. Out. <laughs>